Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another video. This will be the third part in the Bullet Hell Godot tutorial. I think this will be the last, I don't really want to say boring, I mean it's been fun to work on, but there, not much has really happened. Like if you think about how much we've done, it's been pretty cool, but we, we still haven't, we still haven't gotten into the actual aspects of gameplay. We're just kind of playing around with a few different things with the enemy, and I think I've got a better vision now of where I want the game to go. So I'm going to start moving us there, but there's a few more things that I want to touch on before I move on. A lot of these things have been mentioned by people in the comments, so if you've left a comment with a suggestion for the series or a way to improve things, thank you very much. That's awesome. Some of the things I already knew about and I plan to touch on, but there were a couple things that had kind of slipped my mind. So to anyone commenting, thank you very much. That's awesome. I want to take the enemy and kind of do away with the spinning, I don't know, four bullet shot and make the enemy stand in one spot and just shoot a bullet directly at the player, because I think that really will be the first enemy of the game. If we think about an enemy coming out of the side, uh, I want the bullets to be, ba or not the side, but the top, any side, really. I want the bullets to be based off the player's position, kind of as if they're attacking the player, which is, which is kind of where I want, I think, the game to go. So we're going to do that. We're also going to do some optimization, where we start making sure that the bullets don't exist once they leave the screen because we don't need the bullets to exist anymore, and if they do, then we're still running the code for every bullet, even if we can't see it. And after a while, obviously with a bullet hell, there could potentially be thousands or tens of thousands of projectiles over the course of a long level. So we wanna make sure that we're deleting those bullets as soon as they're off the screen. So those are, the, those are a couple of things we're gonna to touch on in this video. So looking at the enemy script, I don't want, I actually don't want the enemy to move anymore, so I can take this away. And I do wanna go ahead and mention something. This was brought up by someone. I haven't been using delta in the process function. So what delta is letting us know is the elapsed time since the previous frame. Ideally, we would be multiplying anything that we're doing in the process function. We would multiply it by delta. So I would say 0 0.05 times delta. And I'm actually gonna have to increase this number since delta is gonna be pretty low. And then if I run this again, it's still rotating, but it's very slow. Let me double it. So it's rotating a little bit faster, but the idea is to use Delta so that your game is frame rate agnostic. So if somebody played the game and their computer, for whatever reason, was only able to run the game at 30 frames per second, then at least the game would look the same as someone playing it at 60 frames per second because we're taking into account the time between the frames rather than uh, moving by a static amount every frame, even when there's less. So when, we, when we're editing this enemy I can take away all these other bullets because I only want one right now and this is going to be a really quick simple fix or quick simple adjustment to the the bullet we still want to spawn it at the position I don't think we really care about rotating it anymore if we're shooting it directly at the player all we need to do is get the player seen here at the top of the enemy script I can actually maximize this we want to get the player so I can say var player equals get uh, parent get parent dot get node player but if I run the game if I use that and I run the game we'll see a a, a bad uh, or an error come out on a null instance because we need to make sure that the player scene is loaded before we call it so if I say on ready before var player and I run this again we should be able to get it just fine. The on ready classifier will make sure that the player node is actually ready before we instantiate it. That way when we use it in the code, it actually does exist. What I want is for the bullet to go directly at the player. So when we edit the direction of the bullet, we just need to do a little vector math and get the vector between these two points. So it's player.position.x minus self.position position.x and then player.position.y minus self.position.y. So now the bullet should be directed at the player. However, it's going to be really difficult to see at this distance from the enemy, but the bullet is kind of shooting by. You can see it blip on the right side of the screen. If I move the player closer, you'll see the bullet a lot better because it's moving much slower. And that's because right now, the way it's set up, the direction is 
the when we set that vector, it's taking into account the distance from or the distance between the enemy and the player. But we don't want that. We want to do what's called normalize this vector, and then we can extend the vector's speed or length, I guess, however we want. So we'll say normalize at the end of this dot normalized. This will break it down into kind of its basic vector, just direction. Now the bullets are moving slowly, but they're still moving towards the player when they're fired. And then we can go into the bullet scene and kind of adjust the speed. So we can do that right now. Go into the bullet script. We're not doing anything in ready still, but in process, when we're adjusting the position, we need to start using delta like we did with the rotation before. We can actually check out this rotated call because I'm just not doing that anymore. And we'll say self dot position plus equal direction times We'll say times delta. Let's just see what that looks like for right now. It's going to be extremely slow. It may be too slow for us to even wait for before we start seeing. Let me speed it up. So we could multiply it by something like 40. And even that's still very slow. So I think we just want to bump this up. Let's do 400 just to see what happens. Okay, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit more reasonable. So we could call that 400 essentially our speed. So this isn't necessarily perfectly optimized, but like with a lot of tutorials, you kind of want to like start somewhere, get something working, and then over time you optimize your solutions. And I kind of like to think of the phrase pre-optimization is the root of all evil. So this is us just getting started and we'll kind of take it from there. So we've got direction times delta times 400. Let's pull this 400 out into a variable that we can edit pretty easily. We'll say var bullet speed equals 400. And then what we can do is we can actually export that variable. I don't think I've talked about this in this series, but we did this back in the mobile series. Export var bullet speed equals 400. If I save that and then I go into the bullet scene, or yes, the bullet scene, Am I right? Okay, yeah. I click on this bullet node here. The bullet speed shows up as a script variable, which is pretty cool. And then we can edit it in here. I can turn it up to 600, save it, and then run it. And the bullet will just be going a little bit faster. So that's the way it looks right now. And then you see I got hit by one of them, and it says hit, hit at the bottom right. So we've got the bullet shooting directly at the player. That's pretty cool. It works pretty well. We can adjust the bullet speed and make it go much faster. The last thing I want to add in this video is a what's called a visibility. So I'm going to go in here and add child node. I've already searched for it before. It's a visibility notifier 2D. The reason we're adding this, and this is another one of the things that was mentioned by someone in the comments. This is actually something I did not know about, but this node gives us the ability to check if a object is on the screen or if a scene is still visible on the screen. So we're going to check the visibility of the bullet. If it's not visible, will delete it using the method Q free. So in the bullet script, in this process, we can check. We probably don't have to check every frame, but like I said, pre-optimization is the root of all evil. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna grab that visibility notifier, and I'm gonna show you the way that we can't do it right now. So I could say dot is on screen. We could say this, if it's on screen equals false, then we queue free. We could say that if it's not on screen, queue free. The issue is that if I run this, we're not gonna see any bullets at all. I don't fully understand why it's set up this way, but if you look at the documentation, so I'm gonna hold command and click this function and it pulls up the documentation. It'll tell you if true, the bounding rectangle is on the screen. Yeah, that's great, that's what we want. But this note says it takes one frame for the node's visibility to be assessed once added to the scene tree. So the method will return false right after it's instantiated. So that doesn't really help us because it's, uh, it's going to return false, which means we can't really use it uh, for this. Maybe there's a way to use it, and I don't know what it is, but we don't need to use it because we have a signal here, screen exited, and we can use that to tell us when the bullet has left the screen. I'm actually just going to call this screen exited. I'm going to connect it to the bullet script. Connect. And then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to call Q free. 
So now we have that nice function that will get rid of our bullet for us once it's off the screen. We're not going to notice much of a difference in performance like this with just a few bullets on the screen. At some point, I do want to maybe spend the video, spend a video creating maybe like this massive stress test and just throw a bunch of enemies and thousands of particles or projectiles and then just make sure that everything kind of runs smoothly as things exit the screen. So those are the things that I wanted to touch on in this video. I don't think there's anything else that I want to mention this time. In the next one, I think things will get a little bit more exciting. We'll start changing the way that the, the camera works or the viewport of the game and start introducing some actual aspects of gameplay. I, I really think I've been spending some time thinking about kind of the flow of the game and, and the, what the actual goal will be and how it could possibly separate itself from other bullet hells. And I'm pretty excited about it. Thank you for checking out this video and this series. And if you watched any of the other videos, thank you for that as well. I'm really enjoying making the videos. I look forward to continuing this series uh, until it's finished. So thank you again, and I hope I see you in the next one.